Okay, cool. We're already recording. So that's good. That's good. I guess we'll go ahead and get this stuff started here. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and see here. Okay. I want to do some working backwards problems. I wanted to practice multi-step equations because I want to make sure that there's something on the Google Classroom about these type of problems. Okay. So, you know, I decided to bust that little hand out. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to see what I could do here. Try to see if we could make this happen. And uh, we'll try to do some problems here. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and, you know, I don't want to take too long, but I do want to get a little bit of this work done so we could go ahead and have something to look back on our Google Classrooms and look at some notes here, okay? So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and select a nice good problem. I'm going to select number five here, okay? I'm selecting number five. Let me go to my workspace and let's go ahead and paste it in here. Let's go ahead and attack this problem, okay? Number five is a good problem here, okay? Notice we don't always use the variable x, okay? There could be different variables. But, you know, at the end of the day, we still need to be able to work backwards and solve. All right. And that's what we need to be able to do in this type of problem. OK, so as you can see, we have negative 12 N. OK, let me go ahead and just make sure I got this right here. I got negative 12 N minus 19 equals to 77. OK, as you can see, the very first thing I did was I went ahead and drew a straight line down from the equal sign, okay? Because now we're able to see the left side of the equation as well as the right side of the equation, okay? This stuff helps us out so we can know which side we're gonna undo, okay? I hope you understand. This is a problem where we are working backwards, okay? We are working backwards. I'm not gonna be able to uh, work forwards here. So we are working backwards. And whenever we're doing any type of math work, any type of math work, you should be thinking in your mind, you should be thinking about the good stuff right here. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, buddy, the good stuff right here. Pam does the order of operations, okay? So we got parentheses at the top. We got ourselves the exponents. And then we got ourselves multiply or divide. Notice how I'm going to be circling the M and D because essentially they are the same, but they're just inverses of each other. They're opposites, but they're like brother and sister. They're, they're basically members of the same family here, as well as add and subtract. They're also going to be circled together because they are essentially, you know, opposites, inverses of each other. They're very, very, very similar here. Okay. Normally, when we work out a problem, we start solving from the top of the order of operations. Order of operations. We start with PEMDAS. But here's the deal. Since we're working backwards, we're not going to start from the top. We start here. We start from the bottom and work our way up, okay? Because we're working backwards, okay? There's a lot of individuals who have issues in this section here. And it really comes back to working backwards and following the exact order of operations, but in reverse. OK, and so that's what we got to do here. OK, notice I drew my straight line down from the equal sign. We have ourselves negative 12 N minus 19. I'm going to repeat this, but I'm going to use the operation. Technically, we have negative 12 times N minus 19 is equal to 77, all right? So here's the deal, all right? We need to cancel out any additions or subtractions that we see. And in this problem, if we know how to read it, and not, notice I'm going to read it one more time. We have negative 12 times N minus 19 equals 77. I hope you're able to see our first step we're going to undo. The first thing we're going to undo in this problem is right here, negative 19, okay? We're going to go ahead and undo that because we're subtracting 19, but since we're working backwards, we need to do the opposite. So the opposite of subtraction, the opposite of negative is positive, is adding, summation, okay? So we're going to add 19 to the left side. But whatever we do to one side of the equation, we better do to the other side of the equation. So we got ourselves 19 added to both sides, okay? I already highlighted that 19 on the left side, the negative 19. But even better now, when you have this negative 19 and this positive 19, they create a zero pair. They get canceled out, and we're done with that work. 
We're going to have to do some work on the other side here. And at the end of the day, it's okay to use a four function calculator. I actually am a big fan of the four function calculator because the four function calculator sometimes, you know, I mean, it's as long as we know the math and what we're doing, a calculator is a good computational device. So we got 77 plus 19 equals to 96. And notice, this is a good way we could use our calculator. I draw a line underneath the work, and I'm going to go ahead and put that 96 on the right side because I did 77 plus 19 to get 96. The equal sign is still in the middle, okay? It still separates the left and right side of the equation. But notice... The left side of the equation is just negative 12 times n, okay? And you could put the little dot here to represent the multiplication. You could do that if you want to, all right? So that's our first step for this multi-step equation, all right? So as you could see here, we now have a simpler equation. It's negative 12 times n equals 96. Notice the minus 19 was already canceled. It's already out the door, okay? We need to isolate the variable, okay? And I'm going to write it over here because that's technically what we're doing. We are isolating. We need to isolate. I was going to write isolating, but I noticed I wrote it as isolate, so I'm not going to write. But we need to isolate the variable. Isolate means to put by itself, you know, like isolation. Good little word right there. But we're isolating our variable n. So as you can see in this problem, we have one operation with n. And it's this. It's the multiplication symbol, okay? It's a little symbol we can see right there, okay, real quick. So that's what we need to undo in this problem, okay? Notice, again, we have a multiplication, but to undo it, we're going to be using the inverse operation, which is division. So I'm going to put a division bar underneath the left side. I'm going to put divide by 12 because the opposite of multiplying by negative 12 is dividing by the negative 12. And yes, make sure it's negative 12. I know I said 12, but I meant to say negative 12 because that's the number we see here. And I hope you guys could see it. The number we see with the letter N the, is, is the negative 12. That we're multiplying by negative 12, so we need to divide by negative 12 to cancel it. But again, whatever we do on one side, we got to do to the other side of the equation. This never goes away. It's our properties of equality, and that's what we need to do. So notice how the 12s on the left side canceled each other out. They're gone. They're gone here, okay? We're only left with the letter N, okay? Equal sign. Now, of course, a positive divided by a negative. They are different signs. Okay, so I'll even put it here. Different signs is negative when multiplying or dividing different signs negative okay so we kind of already should know that the answer is going to be negative if we know our multiplication facts 12 times 8 gives us 96 but again this is a great opportunity to go ahead and use your calculator we got 96 we're going to go ahead and divide it by 12 but not positive 12 make sure you put that negative there because it's really negative 12 we hit equals, and we got ourselves indeed negative 8. So guess what n is equal to in this problem? n equals to negative 8, okay? So multi-step equations, and this is some of the work for it. Now, they're not always all this easy, but with practice, we get better. And not just Mr. Ligado, but everybody gets better when you practice, okay? So Ultimately, we got to practice a little bit. And so hopefully that one made sense and we have our correct answer as n equals negative 8. Okay. Let me go ahead and grab another problem. Something, you know, still a little easy, still a little easy, but something that we're going to grab, we're going to do. And, you know, hopefully, you know, we could look at this problem together. Okay. Um, I guess we could go ahead and just go straight to number 6. I think 6 is a good problem. As you can see on this page, there are decimals and there are fractions, and I want to hit those, okay? I want to really get those. But we'll go in and just go with six. And, of course, this is, you know, just in case we need to practice, just in case, and that's cool. That's why we're doing it, because we're practicing here, okay? We're practicing. As you can see, I'm already writing my equation. My equation is already there. Another thing we could already start setting up whenever we're solving for anything is our PEMDAS, okay? PEMDAS does not go away. PEMDAS is in every single 
thing we do in mathematics. The order of operations is always being used in mathematics. So we got to kind of get that up in here, okay? Hopefully we got it, okay? More practice, we get it, okay? Notice how we are working backwards, okay? We have our variable right here, okay? The variable's right here, and there is work. Notice there is work surrounding the variable. So this is what we need to undo, okay? Um, we could go ahead and draw a line straight down from the equal sign, okay? We draw that line straight down, and then, you know, I'm going to make my, my pen a little thicker right here, and we're going to get this ready to work, okay? So I hope you can see this, okay? We got ourselves 17 plus, and I apologize, that line looks really bad, but, you know, it's okay, it's okay. But we got 17 plus 3 times F equals to 14, okay? That's what we got. All right, so as we take a look at this problem, I know in our mind we may think, hey, we got, you know, additions and subtractions, and we sure do, and I hope you see we sure do. But what could throw us off here is that our variable, I'll, I'll even highlight, I'm going to highlight it, and I'm going to take off this thing right here, so we could make sure that we understand this. We have ourselves three Fs in this problem, okay? We have three Fs, three Fs, okay? And it's a positive 3F. So notice this positive goes with that 3F, okay? We also have a positive, let me go ahead and not use that. Let me use a little highlighter here. But we have a positive 17 on the left side of the equation, okay? I hope you realize this, all right? We are adding 17, positive 17, with the 3F, all right? They actually changed the order of, you know, the variable and stuff of the last problem we saw. But it's okay. We're still going to have to do the work, and we're going to be able to do it. First step, let's go ahead and look at it. We need to undo the work that's with the 3F. And if you could see what's with the 3F, we are adding 17. You can even see here, it's a positive 17. We're going to need to undo it. We need to undo that positive 17. And the opposite of positive 17 is indeed minus 17. We're going to put negative 17 on both sides. And then we're going to be able to start solving this problem here, okay? So let me go ahead and get back here. We draw our line underneath that work. We're going to start canceling things out. I hope you could already see that the positive 17 and the negative 17 on the left side of the equation... They're gone. They're gone. They're out the door because that we don't need anymore. All we're left with, and I apologize that I'm not going to use a lowercase. I'm going to use a little uppercase. We're going to use three and then capitalize F. Just for me, you know, sometimes a lowercase F looks like a plus sign. And Mr. Delgado, I, you know, my best, my handwriting is not the best in the world, as you could see. So I want to make sure we're doing it right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Anyways. We put the equal sign down. Of course, notice these are different signs, okay? They're not the same sign. The 14 is positive. The 17 is negative. Different signs find the difference, okay? And the difference means to subtract, okay? So in this problem, we got negative 17, and I hope you see that. We have negative 17 and we also have a positive 14. Which one do we have more of? Do we have more positives or negatives? Well, in this particular problem, we have 17 negatives. We only have 14 positives. Guess what? Your answer will be negative because we got more negatives, okay? To find how many negatives we got, we're going to do 17, which is the greatest absolute value. 17 is the bigger absolute value. And we're going to find the difference with 14. And 17 minus 14 gives us 3. And, of course, we could do the work. And we get 3. Of course, you don't believe me. We could always check our work with a four-function calculator. And these things are pretty cool. So how would we do this problem on a four-function? Go ahead and bust out 14 because that's a positive 14. I hope you see it. And then we just go ahead and subtract. Subtract 17. And we end up with negative 3. There you go. Okay. But, of course, the more you could do in your head the better off you're going to be, okay? So now we have 3F equals negative 3. We're super close, okay? Last step, we're going to go ahead 
And notice what's the operation with the three and the F? There's an invisible little time symbol here. So you already saw what I'm doing here. You probably already saw the opposite of multiplication is division. And so I'm going to divide both sides by the number three. Okay. Guess what happens to my threes on the left side? My threes on the left, they cancel out. That's why I'm using a highlighter and I'm scratching them out. Okay. So underneath, guess what? The F is on the left side. Equals in the middle. Now we're going to do this work. Okay, so are these the same sign or different signs? These are, again, different signs. When we're dividing or multiplying and they're different signs, oh, man, the answer will be negative. This is when multiplying or dividing. So notice how we have one negative, one positive. Our answer will be negative. And then we could go ahead and do the work. Well, look, you could even type it, of course. You could put negative 3 divided by 3 equals 2. And that's exactly what I was going to say. Because 3 divided by 3 gives us 1. And a negative and a positive creates a negative. Our, crea our correct answer for this problem would be F equals negative 1. Okay? So it comes with practice, ladies and gentlemen. It comes with practice. And don't worry. We're going to keep practicing. We're going to keep it going. We're going to keep it going. Okay? For next problem I see that may be a little awkward here, maybe a little awkward, looks to be number nine. Okay? Number nine technically is a good problem. I like the problem. But, you know, I do want to, you know, you know, it is what it is. And it's a little bit of work. But let's not freak out. Because at the end of the day, we're still going to be able to do it, all right? So, you know, of course, we're not following this handout step by step. I'm not just making this handout. I just wanted to practice some good multi-step equation problems, and I feel like this is a good problem to, to go ahead and practice, okay? So I got number nine up here, and we can go ahead and set this one up, okay? It's good to know how to read the problem, because if you know how to read the problem, that's already, you're already, you know, halfway there, pretty much solving this, okay? First things first, we got ourselves the variable D, okay? I hope you see it. Variable D divided by negative 4 plus 3 equals to 15, okay? I'm going to go ahead and repeat myself. We got ourselves the variable D, and we have ourselves divided by 4 all right, but not positive 4, it's negative 4. And then after we do that, we're going to grab the addition. We're going to add it with 3. We're going to add the quotient of D and negative 4 with 3, and we got to get 15, okay? Ooh, I hope you see this problem it is a working backwards problem, okay? We have a variable. The variable is D, and there's a bunch of work surrounding the variable D. But we'll be able to do it. It's going to be a piece of cake. So let's go ahead and get it done, okay? Remember, same thing. Start from the bottom of the order of operations. Do we see any adds or subtracts? I hope you see it because I see it right here. I see it right here. It's right here. This one right here, this plus three, okay? That's what we got to undo, okay? That's what we're going to undo. What's the opposite of plus three? Positive three? Well, it's going to be minus three. And, of course, I hope it made sense. We had added three. So the opposite is minus 3, okay? Notice what happens to my 3s on the left side. They cancel out. They're going to be gone, okay? So we're going to bring the other stuff on the left side of the equation. We're going to bring it straight down. And I hope, you know, you're noticing that I'm actually doing every single step. I'm showing my work because at the end of the day, guys, it doesn't matter how fast you do the problem. OK, accuracy matters. And honestly, accuracy matters on one particular problem. But the skills we're learning in math are not about answering only one problem. They're about answering all the problems. So that's why it's very important that we actually get in the habit of doing our work. Anyways, we got 15 minus 3 on the right side. Of course, we could bust out a calculator if we want, but hopefully we don't need it. And we should end up with 12. Of course, you could always bust up the calculator if you want. You could go ahead and put 15 minus 3. Okay, don't put 115, okay? So, yeah, you know, we all make mistakes. You, didn't, you know, me, I'm making mistakes. So it's all good. But at the end of the day, 15 minus 3, 
equals 12, okay? So we did our first step. The first step was the subtraction property of equality. We subtracted three from both sides of the equation, okay? That's our first step. Let's get ready for our next step. We see ourselves D divided by negative four equals to 12. We still do not have the D isolated. We have a division by four. So we need to do the opposite of divide by four. And you're already seeing me draw a little dot. Because that little dot means we're going to be multiplying by negative 4. Notice it's the exact same number I'm dividing by, okay? So I'm dividing by negative 4 originally. And to undo the work, we're going to multiply by negative 4, okay? But remember, whatever you do to one side of the equation, we need to do to the other side. So notice I'm going to put the 12 in parentheses, and then I'm going to put a negative 4 in parentheses. And if you don't understand what the right side of the equation means, well, it means we're multiplying 12 times negative 4. That's all it means, okay? That's all it means. Notice the negative 4s on the left side of the equation have just canceled, okay? So I'm going to end up with D here, okay? D is going to be on the left side, all right? The right side of the equation is going to be 12 times negative 4. So I'm going to go ahead and just show you. I mean, you know, of course... 12 times 4 is something we could do, but 12 times 4, make sure if you're going to be using a four-function calculator, make sure you make sure you put the right positives and negatives. But as you can see, 12 times negative 4 equals to negative 48. And it makes sense with what I had said previously, because these are not the same sign. They are different signs. And remember, different signs is going to be a negative value when multiplying or dividing all right so i appreciate you working with me for a little bit um i'm gonna go ahead and stop recording on this one and we're gonna go ahead and keep making some more videos and hopefully keep practicing okay guys well um hope you guys have a good one and um, maybe hopefully some of this stuff work for you okay bye bye